Hey guys, Terry Red here, and in this video, I'm going to be uh, doing another walkthrough demonstration of uh, PhysX being added to a future pinball table. But in this video, it's going to be different though. Uh, we have a, a very cool new tool added on that allows us to dynamically change PhysX settings for all the main uh, flipper and swing physics settings in real time while playing a table. This is huge, guys. This is like total next level. Like this is totally cool. It allows you to, you know, make changes while playing the game instead of exiting out of the table, changing settings on the table or the script, going back, back and reloading the table, making changes. And for a table, for example, like Star Wars Death Star Assault Galactic Edition, which as everyone knows, takes a long time to load, this is a lifesaver. And it is totally gonna change how people, you know, like to update their tables and it makes it a much easier process for people who don't know much about physics, but maybe want to change a few things for their own uh, liking or for those who know physics really well, they don't have to, you know, go through a whole bunch of settings. Uh, and it's not a complicated way of doing things. It's very, very, very cool. And for those who are asking what the heck is PhysX? Well, PhysX is basically JLU adapted and Fozzy techniques used on visual pinball tables to upgrade their tables for more realistic physics. He's adapted those techniques to be used on future pinball and it has been an absolute total game changer. Uh, the first couple tables are out. Uh, Sonic Pinball Mania is out with PhysX and it has had nothing but absolute praise. People absolutely love the updated physics. They said it's a total game changer and they can't believe it's future pinball and they, they love every aspect of it. So the days of future pinball's old crappy physics are basically are basically gone now. You know, we, we, we have options and they're great options and I'm going to show you guys in this video how you can easily change those options to your liking to make the table play the exact way you want. So anyways, now that I've ram rambled on about that, uh, a, a quick overview of uh, what PhysX is. So basically, all you're doing is you're copying a bunch of uh, code to the table, you add a timer, and then you uh, set the slope over here between five to six degrees. Uh, you update the flippers to the angle you want, and then all the rubbers, whether they be on the slingshots or elsewhere, you'll put new rubbers on the posts. You'll put new wall rubbers along, you know, the actual bands. You'll do that all over the table. And then you'll also put new plastic walls to cover up all the drop targets. So that way we're going to have control over the, the physics that are being used for bouncing off the drop targets. Uh, you know, these are the main, oh, and also the, the bumpers. We uh, get rid of the old bumpers and the old bumper techniques and the old EM kickers and other things that used to be used. And we add a, a new uh, bumper model, but we also add a new uh, skirt peg model. And those combined with the newer updated physics just work really, really well. And other, as other parts too, you can see I added new rubber uh, things for the rollover lane. So it's, it's a big update to the table overall. It's a, it's a huge difference, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of work. It's not just a, a quick copy and paste for the whole thing, but it's not difficult. It, it can be done in like one evening e easily. You know, it's not a hard thing to do. Uh, so you would copy all the code and I'll just show you here. Uh, if, you, if it's one of my releases, it's typically gonna, you're gonna have all this stuff at the beginning of the script here. You're gonna go past all that, the change log and everything else. And then you're gonna see the table options. I recommend you guys look through these because it allows you to set th certain things for the table startup, a uh, lightsaber color, uh, backlash, or, you know, all sorts of things for starting up. So that way you don't have to change your fa change it to your favorite stuff every time. Uh, you'll see the pin event V2 settings. This is just if you want custom settings for the table. Normally you never have to touch any of this unless you want something special or different for this table only. So you can skip past that. And then you're gonna come down to the physics physics system. So this section is where you're going to be able to make changes. Now, every one of my tables have lovely install instructions included. So if you go to the install instructions and go past, you know, the beginning stuff, the table requirements, which tell you everything you need, what to install, the settings you need, like everything you need is in here, guys. There's no excuse. You know, it's all in here. Uh, you go past all this, you'll eventually come to the physics section here, which gives a small blurb about what it's all about. Uh, you also have an optional 
8K polygon ball model. It's not required, but it does work better for more accurate physics. Uh, and it's a zip file, and it's included with the table. And if you want to use it, you can do it to one of two ways, as it describes here. You can either rename it to default zip and put it into your BAM folder. That means it automatically gets used for every future pinball table. You know, but if it causes problems, then you know you, you don't want to do that for older tables. Uh, you know, but if you're only using say newer tables, then you won't care anyway. Or you can uh, rename it to the table file name and uh, put it with the table file, and then it automatically gets used just for that table file uh, and, and no other tables. So that's an option if you want. And then if you scroll down here, you'll come to the PhysX profiles. Now this is something I'm doing on my tables. I don't know if anyone else is gonna do anything like this, but that's what this section here is all about. So it's just telling you if you wanna change, easily change settings from one profile to another, a profile is just you know, a, a, a group of all the settings being changed at one time instead of you guys having to go and finagle all that stuff, you know. So basically read what it tells you here and like the picture shows you, if you want to change settings, you change your profile number here to whichever one up here that you want. So in my case, I have profile two. So what I need to do is it needs 592 to be set for the physics XML FPS. So what that means, just like the picture over here is showing you, you go down here and you make sure this is matching whatever it is for the profile up here. In this case, I have it set to 592. By default, it's usually 296 because if you want higher FPS for the physics engine, not the game, not to the refresh rate or your video card or your monitor. This is for the physics engine. If you want to run it at 592, you need a faster PC. If it slows down and stutters like crazy, then make sure you change the profile to, you know, one that says 296. Okay? So that's what all this is all about. Just do just like it shows you here. You don't have to do this, but you have this option to ch change to whatever profile you want out of the options shown. And every table will be different. You know, this may be different when you, you know, even get Star Wars when I finally upload it. It may actually be different. And then when you scroll past that, there's another section I have on here, which is what this video is going to be about. So this is like the physics testing tools. So you have two options to use. The one down here is uh, you can enable the PhysX profile change key. So what that's going to do is it will allow you to, in real time while playing the table, change between these different profiles at any time so you can compare how they, how they play, right? Uh, the only thing is you have to be sure the profiles you change to that the FPS ma uh, will match because uh, it won't change this setting for you while you're in the game. This setting has to be set in table script before you load the game. So if you switch to different profiles, in my case now, I would switch to either this one or this one or this one and test those. Because if you switch to one with the wrong FPS setting, it might actually uh, cause the table to play incorrectly or lighting may work wrong or balls get stuck in flippers and oddballs. So that's what all this is telling you right here. All right. So if you enable this key, then you can change that with the G key while playing. The other one, and what this video is all about, is the PhysX Tweaker Tool. It tells you everything you need to know in this little blur blurb here. But basically, if you enable this, and both of these are disabled by default, by the way, to make sure in case people use the F and G key in their setup to make sure it's not going to be causing problems. But if you enable this key, what it's going to do is it's going to enable uh, a tool that will appear on a, a secondary DMD display on the play field which shows all the settings you can adjust in real time. Super easy, that's what I'm gonna show you. And then uh, if you have those enabled and you wanna change the settings, what those settings are gonna change is what we have here. These are the main physics settings. Now, in this case, I have them sectioned off into like six profiles. Uh, this is profile one. The settings we're gonna be changing in this video are these ones here, the flipper settings and the slingshot settings. So it's gonna be all those. The rest of these, the rubber settings and all that, we're not gonna be changing that in real time. I mean, we technically could, but those vary table by table. And you know, normally you wouldn't be adjusting those like crazy. But I mean, if someone was ambitious, they could add that to the tool if they really wanted to. You know, So you can see here, these are all your settings. And then this is profile two. All of its settings are going to be, you know, a little bit different. Not too many of them. Profile three, and I'll explain the difference between all of them while we play the, uh, in the video. 
So I'm just going to explain a couple things since we have all this up. So the important one is the swing angle here. This has to be correct and match what is shown in the editor here. When you click on a flipper, there it goes. You have to make sure those match. If they don't match, the ball's gonna stick to the flippers. Things are not gonna work correctly. This is the one thing we can't change dynamically. Well, we, we could have if we wanted to, but there's no point because it has to match this setting exactly. So that's the only setting you're not gonna see with uh, the tool when we start using it. So uh, I'm gonna just go through a little bit of some of this other stuff. So and a stroke torque. So an and a stroke switch, if you don't know what that is, uh, basically here's your flipper and here's the mechanical uh, hardware underneath the play field so basically when you push your button it closes this switch which then makes the flipper pop up like you see here this little handle on the, the, the flipper will then push open the end of stroke switch which this is basically telling the, the computer co the control system in the game that uh, hey your flipper is at max uh, stroke angle so now cut back to power being applied to this uh, solenoid because when p power is applied to this solenoid by pushing the button, it makes this pull the plunger in. So by having the end of stroke switch tell the computer, hey, knock it off, uh, back off the power because the flipper's at full strength. We don't need more power because, you know, going from not moving to flicking up real quick, you need maximum power at that point, right? So the end of stroke is going to back off how much power is going through here. Uh, to keep your your uh, coils from burning out is the it's the main reason. But also, if you have mul say in multi ball, you have multiple balls coming down and hitting the flipper. Well, then uh, that could actually cause the flipper to bounce down if this is on lower power, right? So if that happened, it would cause the end of stroke switch to then make contact again, which would tell the computer, "Hey, the button's on, but the flipper is moving down." So what it will do is it'll reapply more power to make sure that that flipper does not move down. So it has a dual purpose there. That's a simplified explanation. So that's what these guys are all about, the, the end of stroke here. I personally never really adjusted them, but I figured I'd explain it to him in a, a, a simple explanation. Uh, so I really can't tell you much, but he's got a, a simple explanation for what each of these does. I've just never really messed around with that one too much. These two are the two that you're going to be using more than anything. The base omega, that refers to this area of the flipper over here, the base part. That's the power that is going to be applied to that area. Tip omega is, well, as you can imagine, is the, the tip area, how much power it will have applied when the flipper gets uh, turned on. Live catch, so that's basically when a ball falls down and you have the flipper up like this. Sorry, you have the flipper down like this. When the ball falls down, you flick the flipper perfectly to catch the ball and in a way so that it will not bounce and then bounce away or bounce off. And, you know, it's a way of totally controlling a ball when it drops down to the flipper. You can change the difficulty for that. Uh, I have it at three. You know, that that's kind of probably the minimum because it, it gets too easy if it's set up one. Uh, aim range and aim, aim orientation. Uh, the way I understand it is kind of like he mentions here, kind of like a field of view for a first person shooter or a racing sim, you know. So the idea is that when you shoot, uh, you know, the more narrow it is, uh, the more it won't spread out with your shot. Uh, you know, that I, I, that's the way I look at it. I, I really don't mess with these ones either that a whole lot. Uh, bouncing fall off, or so you don't really have to mess with that too much, but the bouncing coefficient, uh, that's when the balls basically bounce off the flipper. Uh, you know, how, how bouncy you want it to be. And uh, the fall off for that is, you know, will limit how much that is affected based on the ball speed. Uh, now these two here, flipper static friction. So basically it's the flip, uh, when the ball's rolling, how much friction is applied to a rolling ball, whereas the kinetic friction is how much is applied to a sliding ball. Uh, I'll explain more about that uh, in the video, more, more so this guy here, the kinetic friction. And ball uh, kinetic sensitivity so that needs to be adjusted basically if you change your fps in the physics engine or if you get bigger different size flippers uh it'll affect how the ball interacts with it so if the ball tends to stick to this thing then you may need to increase this a little bit and that's one of the settings i have to change on a different profile that uses a higher fps settings so that's why i have different profiles for 296 and 592 uh, slingshot threshold, that is super simple. That's basically when the ball comes down and bounces off the sling. If it's not moving fast enough, it won't 
it won't set off the swing. So uh, the higher the threshold is, the more speed the ball has to be to make the slingshot go off. So when you have a ball rolling down along it, uh, it's going to basically prevent that from being super sensitive. And the rest of these, we are not going to adjust. So that's basically, I wanted to show that here before we get into the table because it's easier to explain. Uh, so what I tend to do is I actually tend to, because when we make changes while playing the table, they can't be applied back into the script. There's no way to, for it to just automatically make all these settings in the script get updated. We have to manually add that ourselves. So what I tend to do is I tend to paste all the settings like in Notepad. So that way it's easy to set, you know, and then I put that on my second screen, you know, and I, like I have, a, I have a second screen over here and then that way it's always there and handy. If you don't have a second screen, well, then, I mean, you're, you're going to have to have a pad of paper or something because, you know, there's no way to get around it. You're going to have to know what the settings are so that you can add them back into the table script afterwards when you're happy with what settings you have. Uh, and, and that's about it. So we got our notepad ready, and uh, we'll load up the table and uh, get into the demonstration. You know, it's, it's, you need to explain things, you know. Like, I, I'm more about, you know, if people are interested in this, this stuff, Explaining things is a lot better than just going in and playing a game and then letting people just look and like, ooh, is there a difference? Is there not a difference? Physics is one of those things that's like, you know, you can play a table all you want, uh, but you have, or in a video, but you have to play it yourself to see how much of a difference it makes. So I'm going to take this opportunity to explain why this table takes so freaking long to load. It's probably the longest loading table in future pinball and visual pinball history. Uh, it's a very large table. I think it's like 345 megabytes. That's by far the biggest future pinball table, easily. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is, at least. Uh, I don't know if there's many VPX tables that are that size. I'm pretty sure there are some. Uh, so the, the reason why it takes so long is future pinball, the core program, is older and the way it parses 3D models used in the table as a future pinball model, it takes a very long time to do that. Uh, anything that needs to be a future pinball toy or a future pinball functional object like a flipper, a bumper, or, or anything that's physics related has to be a future pinball model. Uh, because I use a lot of detailed models for toys and other things in this table, it takes a long time for them to process. So that's why the first minute takes so freaking long. There's no way around it. The other reason is Slam Tail added a shitload of videos to this table directly in the table itself. Not Pup Pack or anything like that. That's my stuff. It's separate. I'm talking directly to the table. And every video has individual JPEGs for every single frame in the video. So you're talking thousands and thousands of JPEGs just for those videos. So that's why the injecting textures take so long to process. So there's no way around it, guys. I, you know, I, nothing else I can do about it. Now, as far as BAM models, you know, BAM being an add-on to Future Pinball, which modernizes it and adds on lots of things, and it's what lets us do all this new stuff and change the physics and all this uh, other stuff. Uh, table authors can add new modern models, FBX or object or animated models. Those load up instantly at the beginning of the table. Like when you see the yellow text popping up, that's BAM processing all the new modern stuff on table startup. Uh, I, it's a long story of how those work, but bottom line is BAM models, as you can see here, it, it's, it processes those, and they're way more detailed than the rest of the table is, within seconds, compared to like one minute to, for Future Pinball to process all of its models. So there we go, we're loaded up finally. So for this to work, uh, first of all, I want to take a moment to say I love how this table turned out. You know, like Sam Tilt made such a great table over the years, and I am just so happy that you know, I've been able to just update it to, for my own personal likes and preferences and beyond the disco, you know, it's now not just a very cool table, but it's a great playing table. So all you, sorry to say, all you dickheads or jerks out there that you know, were like, oh, if you like Future Pinball and Dancing Disco, well then yeah, Future Pinball is your, your, your thing. But if you want a table that actually will shoot the ball accurately, you know, then you know, like, you know, don't be jerks, guys. You know, like, for crying out loud. Like, you know, when people put a lot of work into any table on any platform, you know, be respectful of their work. You know, don't don't be a jerk. So, bottom line is, now that I got that rant out of the way, 
you know, I, I put a lot of work into this stuff. So you know what? You know, when, when someone's being a jerk, you know, like I, I no, it's not cool. I don't care what what pro program you're using. You know, be respectful for other people's content and other people's programs as well. So now that I got that rant out of the way. Uh, what I uh, I, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but. Uh, I wanted to point out uh, a couple things since it's on my mind. Uh, the, the time attack crashing that we had before has been fixed. So I found a workaround that avoids what causes the crash. Uh, so when you play time attack and fail, it's no longer going to crash on you. Uh, and I fixed a couple other things, you know. Uh, so there are some other updates besides PhysX on this table. But I mean, look at this thing, man. Look how this turned out. Like, this looks so beautiful, man. You know, like, I I, I love this. It's such an awesome table, you know. And, and this just, you know, like, look at these guys, man. Like, you know, like, look at this stuff. This is cool, man. Yeah, I, yeah, I, you know, I'm... I'm tooting my own horn, but I don't care, man. You know, uh, I put a lot of work into this, and I like how how it worked, how it turned, how it turned out. Anyways, okay, sorry about the rant. <laughs> uh, sorry about all that, guys. Uh, so, what happened was uh, I came up with an idea of being able to change physics profile physics profiles, but I also uh, wanted to be able to change them while playing the table. So, if you hit the letter G, like I talked about before, uh, you'll see. So it just now switched to profile three. I was on profile, profile two. If you keep going, it's going to go through all the different profiles and, and with a little description that I added. So the, the default is normally 296, but I'm set to 592. So I can't use that profile, but I can use this one. This is what we start up with. So th by cycling to that, it's applying all the physics settings for that profile automatically instantly. So I don't have to go through individual settings to change things, right? Uh, so if I cycle again to the next 592, now if I want one with a little bit stronger flippers, not that much of a difference, but just a little bit, uh, you can do that. And then for narrow flippers, I'll show you what that means in a little bit, uh, why I added that option there. All right, so I'm going to go back to the main profile. So the physics tweaker tool. So to explain, I'm going to just do a couple things here. So with the BAM... Uh, with BAM, you were always able to change the basic settings, the basic XML settings right here, you know, so you can change like the table slope and, you know, the gravity, the, the materials settings, you know, you can go through all that, the, the amazing flipper tweaks. Like, look at this thing. This is, this is, this is, this is crazy, man. Look at all the stuff he's got on here, you know? So this is the stuff that we already preset up in PhysX. You know, this is what we do in the green XML, physics XML sec section that is in the table script. That's what all this stuff is that we already set up ahead of time. And you've got a, this testing tool that automatically plops a ball down and lets the flippers go. And it shows, you know, how uh, the trajectory, it's, it's awesome. I, you know, like it's not required, but I just wanted to show this. So you can change some of this stuff, but I would not touch any of this. Uh, because with PhysX, you're already preset for most of this, so you're not going to want and, and this is stuff you'd have to put back in the table script. So I just wanted to show that because we were always able to do these settings while playing a table for the most part, you know, and then apply it to the table script. And that's all we really had before, right? That's all we really did before. But the, the option to dynamically change or add to this stuff was always there. It just, someone had to take the time to do it. And, you know, and, and you have like Shiva, he did his... Shiva flippers and they're, and they're a great system, you know, he used it in Jungle Girl and all that uh, But for me, I, I like the idea of being able to do it just like and Fozzie it, it, So that way you got a lot of visual pinball guys who are masters at that They can help you out. They can they know how to do all this stuff way better You know, and it's may, way more relatable to me and other people that way so That's why I'm happy that JLU took the time to update physics or uh, to add physics uh, to create it you know, so that it's very relatable to what's done on Visual Pinball. Now, if you're a cabinet player, uh, if you play on a cabinet and you want to adjust settings, you're going to have to go into this menu, the add-ons menu, and you're going to have to go into hide overlays and make sure that is set to off. By default, that's set to always because you guys don't want the DMD and the other stuff showing on your play field. Well, if you want to use the PhysX tweaking tool, you have to re-enable it. So make sure it's set to hide overlays off. 
and then when you turn on the PhysX tweaking tool, it will then show up on the play field in the top right, just like I'm doing here on the desktop view. So the PhysX tweaking tool, well here, actually before I, I wanna get this back, there we go, okay. So if you push F, here we go, the PhysX tweaker tool. Now what we did is we added an, uh, another DMD just for this to be used. Uh, so basically to go through all the options, you can go up, down, so these are all the options I showed you in the table script before. So now they're all there for you to change in real time to whatever you want. But then you can also uh, apply, uh, well here, I'll explain more about the FP RAM afterwards. Uh, you, okay, here, here, here's a simple thing. I, I guess I should explain this now. So uh, FP RAM it, on Future Pinball is basically the same as NV RAM, you know, when you save high scores or service menu settings or whatever. Just like in a real pinball table, you have the battery backup and it saves your settings. That's what FP RAM is. It's basically the same thing. So certain things can be saved and retrieved from that the next time the table loads up. So you have the option to make all your changes. So you can see the FP RAM value right now is the default. Uh, the st you know, it's the same as the first startup value, I should say. Uh, you have the option to make all these changes you want and then save them to an FP RAM file not to be applied to the table, but just, you know, if you exit this table and you reload it again and you want to, like, oh, what were those values I used before? And then, well, they're all saved to FP RAM, and then you can reference that at any time, and you can also apply those values into the table at any time. So if you look here, uh, you can apply all FP RAM values to PhysX settings. So the PhysX settings are the live settings we're changing right now. Not the table script, but just what we're doing while we're playing, right? Uh, if you want to save all PhysX settings to FB RAM, that's just what you do for after you did all your changes. You will save all those settings to the FB RAM, and then they're automatically instantly applied. Now, if you want to reset everything to the way it was when the table first started, then that's what this menu does. It's reset all PhysX settings to startup values. Startup values are what, in my case, with the way I'm using this, others may have this all work differently, but for my stuff, uh, it's basically you uh, have the table script settings. And when the table loads up, that's what it uses when it starts up, and that's what the startup settings are. So you have three values here. You have the live value, which is uh, this one that I'm adjusting right now. And then you have the startup value, which is from the table script from when the table first loads up. And then you have the FB RAM value. So I'll just give you an example here. I'm going to make a bunch of, you know, crazy changes here. Like, you know, I'm just going to go nuts here, you know, just to make it easy to see a difference here. Okay, so you go through all these. And then I want to apply, save all the physics settings that I just adjusted to FB RAM. So you do left or right to do that. And then boom. It's been saved. So now, if you go back through the settings, the FB RAM values are now saved. And they're always saved. They're saved to a file, so they won't go away unless you change them again, right? Uh, the startup value is always there for reference. Now, let's say I screwed everything up really bad, all right? I can go back to reset all physics settings to startup values. And then, boom. And then now we're back to what they were when we loaded the table. So you're basically resetting it to the table script values uh, when you first load it up. All right, so so that okay, so that's a basic uh, explanation of the main menu. So now that we're in here, uh, I'm going to just do uh, some simple demonstrations. All right, so. Oh yeah, blast that sucker, yeah. All right, everyone loves that. You know, you just mash away at the, the action button or the launch button and fire away. All right, so now ignore uh, BB-8's constantly spinning ball. That's just because I'm using the ball roller. It's not, a, it's not an effect on the physics or anything like that. That's just the way it is when I'm using the ball roller with these new settings. So don't worry about that. It has no effect on anything. So, and a stroke torque. So I mentioned before that I don't really you know, know much about adjusting those. But the main ones you're probably gonna adjust are gonna be the base omega and the tip omega. So let's just go by how, how, how this sucker is shooting right now, okay? So 
Now this, this has all been updated, so you know it's all it's all PhysX running on this sucker now, and it's so much better, so much more controllable, and you know it, oh, it's so nice now. Oh look at that! I did a live catch right there. All right. All right. So. So you can see how it played there. Now I'm going to crank that base omega now up to like a really, really, really high value. Okay, like absurdly high. You know, you never normally go quite this high, you know. But now if I do it, you can see that you know coming off the base, this part here, it's going to have more power than it than it did before. All right. And yeah, you can see that. And the thing is, though, stronger flippers is not always a better thing. Like sometimes it's actually a bad thing because it makes certain shots you know, that may have been angled a certain way, now the stronger power applied to them may have an effect on the angle of the shot. So that's your base omega. We'll go back down to 65. And now the tip omega is going to be the power on the tip here. So let's just see how, how it's playing right now. All right. So you can see the tip is not super, super powerful, but, it, but it's nice where it's set because now you can actually make certain shots better on this particular table and I'll explain a little bit what I mean by that. So now I'm going to crank that sucker. Okay. We're going to go to like 45. Okay. So coming off, oh, <laughs> hold on. So coming off the tip. So you can see it's like it's got more strength to it. Yeah, like look how fast that sucker is flying now, eh? In comparison. And the problem is, that's going to make certain, yeah, look at that's way too fast, <laughs> you know, but the problem is, it's going to affect certain shots, and I'll explain more about that later, but certain shots are going to be now, the angles are completely different because of that, and it's not as simple as, give it more power, this, you know, Tim the Toolman Taylor, yeah, I don't think he played pinball much, but, you know, like, yeah, so you, you want to bring that back down to a more realistic value. I normally have, on previous setups, uh, sometimes it's at 30, but... 25 seems to be what I like to use as the default instead of like the, 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 the more powerful option. Now, live catch difficulty. Well, I mean, that's just how, how easy or hard it is to do a live catch. I may, okay, so I, I got one down there, right? So if I, if I crank that up to 10, I don't know what the, I think 10 is the max, I think. See, so yeah, like it, it makes it more difficult to do a, a proper, perfect live catch, you know? Whereas if we put it on one, it's way too easy. So I, I like it at three. Uh, aim range and aim or orientation. Again, I haven't played with that uh, too much, but I, again, I think that's more like a, how focused your shots are and how much they'll vary or not. Uh, don't quote me on that. Again, I don't. I'm not a physics guy. You know, I, I don't fully understand all these that well. You know, so I'm going through the way I understand it so far. When I've been adding these to the tables, uh, I've been using more of the base defaults and then kind of working from there. So uh, balls. Ball, bouncing fall off threshold. So that one I've never really ha needed to really change. Uh, but the flip, yeah, okay. So the flipping bouncing coefficient. Now this one's easy to show. So this is basically going to be the bounce of the, you know, the rubbers when the ball come, bounces off the flipper. Some people like it super bouncy. Some people, oh man, they, they don't want it bouncy at all. Uh, they, they just want it to be like a, or, you know, just, yeah. I, I don't know. Everyone has their own preference, but... So you, can see, you get a rough idea. They're, they're not super bouncy right now. So you can see here. You know, that, that that's about roughly how bouncy it is right now. But if I crank this sucker. Okay. So watch how bouncy it is now. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's one way to... Woohoo! Yeah. So you can see the difference, right? <laughs> I love it. Just keep adding more time. <laughs> yeah. All right. So... That's one that I think a lot of people might play with. You know, they, they may prefer more bouncy flippers. And there you go. Now, this is what happens on time attack when you fail now. You know, normally the ball drops right away. And there you go. It skips uh, any possibility of crashing, and it goes right back to, you know, uh, the track like normal. All right. So let's get back into this again. All right. All right. 
So, so I'll put that back to the default. Uh, the fall off, basically what that means is uh, it'll affect how much of the bounce is effective based on ball speed, more or less. That's like, so uh, you can see how it is right now, right? You know, not crazy bouncy. Now, if I turn that up, I do believe that'll mean it'll make it less bouncy based on ball speed. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> that, that basically kills it. <laughs> so, so if you want it to be, uh, if you want to have like less fall off, fall off means like uh, it'll drop off how the, its value over time. Uh, then you can reduce this. So th those two I could see people adjusting. Uh, the flipper static friction, I haven't adjusted that one too much, but basically that's the idea of how much friction there is with the ball rolling. I haven't really quite known best how to really change that one. I haven't need really needed to. Now this next one, flipper kinetic friction. Now this is the a big one. This is one that you know, some people may be adjusting a lot depending on the table. This is the one I had to adjust for Sonic Pinball Mania for those upper flippers, the little small flippers, because when they were left with the more realistic flipper settings, it was impossible to make the Mania mode shot. And with a lot, some of these future pinball tables that were designed with the old flippers in mind, some of those shots that worked fine with old, wide, unrealistic shooting future pinball flippers that won't work well anymore with realistic ones, and I'll show you the difference of what I mean. So I, I look at this as uh, basically the wide or narrow setting for a flipper. Uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you here. Okay, so this is where it was normally for most tables with the proper realistic angles and everything like that with Sonic and everything else. Okay, so now I want to try to hit this guy over here, that drop target or this guy over here. So look how difficult it is for me to do that. That's almost off the end of the tip of the flipper and I can't come anywhere close to that drop target. Like I would have to have it go right off the very, very edge of it. And even then I still couldn't quite hit it. You know, so, and, and I watched a couple guys testing this in their stream and that they, they were struggling trying to hit those targets at all. And it's a legit problem for this table. You know, same thing with this. I, I can't get it into that uh, kicker over there. Despite it coming right off the tip, it's it's hard to get it over there, right? Now you can have it move with speed and have a, well, <laughs> well I'll let that go. Uh, you'll have a better chance when it's rolling and then hitting it with the flipper. But for me personally, when I, when I have a table, when I make a table, you know, the basic shots all around from need, need to be achievable from the flipper when it's held. The ball's uh, held like this, you know, like I should be able to make this shot. I should be able to make these guys over here, you know, like all the basic shots within re real, sorry, within realism. What I mean is like, you know, this guy would go up here. You know what I mean? Uh, I shouldn't need to backhand something to make this shot. I shouldn't need to backhand something from here to make this shot. Like, you know, that's, that's not fun to me. Like it, it's cool if it can happen, but it, that should not be a design of a, of a table uh, for me personally, you know? So for this table, because that was too damn hard to hit those targets and all that, I had to reduce this, which means that it's gonna shoot a little bit wider than it normally does. But that makes this table way more fun and achievable to actually clear the game. So watch how easy it is for me to now hit that uh, drop target over there. Oh, well, okay, if I don't suck, but... Uh, there we go again. There you go. So it, it's much, much easier to hit it. I could do it pretty much almost every time from a cradle ball or from a moving ball. And same with the, the kicker over here. Now I can do it like every time. No, I was just trying to, uh, I want to do normal gameplay. You know, you guys don't want to be sitting here forever, but but you, you, you see what I mean? See what I, I'm talking about? It's a huge difference between the two. Now, some people may like that, some people may not, you know, but that's why I have options on here and that's why I'm showing you this video so that you guys can make that change for yourself. Instead of saying, Terry Red, why are you making this thing not play 100% realistic from a real pin? Well, this isn't a real pin. So you know what? I make it so that it's the most fun to play and actual achieve shots and get through the actual game. So that's that setting. Uh, the, the ball kinetic sensitivity, this one is basically, this is the one that you have to change based on uh, the FPS 
of the XML settings, of the, the physics engine settings, so the, the 296 or the 592. Depending on what one you have, you're going to have to change this one to possibly increase it or decrease it. So basically, uh, J. Lou described it as if the ball sticks to a flipper, then you may have to you know, increase it more. Or if the flipper is a larger size flipper and it sticks, you're going to have to increase it more. If you increase the, the physics engine to 596 or higher, then you're going to have to increase it more until it works correctly. So that's what that one is. Uh, in normal gameplay, like, you know, it, it's playing fine. If it, if it wasn't, then you would see odd things happening. Uh, when you do a live catch, the ball will get stuck in the middle of the flipper. Just oddball things. So that's what that setting is all about. That's basically uh, just, uh, you know, make things work right when changing FPS or flipper size, basically. Uh, slingshot threshold, oh, that's super easy. So basically when you hit a sl slingshot, you have to be going at a certain speed. Uh, and this is uh, the lowest threshold, so the most sensitive. So, you know, it'll fire off, you know, fairly normal without needing too much power, uh, speed from the ball. So let's put it like to, you know, like seven, you know, and try, I'm gonna just try to fling it. And you can see it's not, it's not having any effect at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's going to vary from table to table, but you know, maybe you want to put it at two so that, you know, it's, it doesn't fire off as easily when the ball is, you know, rolling down along here. See it, me trying to do that before it would have fired off normally. So that's up to you guys, how, how sensitive you want that to be. And that's it guys. That's, that's all the main settings. Like, you know, it, the only other things that uh, you would really mess around with would be the flipper angles here in the table editor. How much you want it to swing up and then where it rests. Now, I could have had these flippers tipping down even more to make these shots a little easier. But then the flippers kind of start looking ridiculous. And then you start getting wider open spaces here, you know, and it, it just, it, I, I don't like that myself. So... When you're happy with all your physics settings, then what I like to do is save them all to FBRAM, which I did. So now I have all those settings as a backup, just in case, so I can reference them now. You know, any changes I may have made, which I didn't, I don't think I made any actually, <laughs> you know, but uh, uh, so, so now that we've gone through the basic settings, now I can show you the difference with uh, the profiles, for example. So. That was, we were we were on the the default uh, two at 592 frames per second. So I have a faster PC. That's why I can do that. Uh, on my older PC, this table running at 592 would stutter like crazy. So just a heads up to you guys. If it's not running good, change the profile to a 296 profile instead of a 592. Uh, so I'm gonna, so this is our default. What I was, I was normally playing with. So I'm going to change it to stronger flippers. You're not gonna, on this table, you're not going to see that much of a difference. I, I just increased the tip omega a little bit. The base omega, I did not change because what I found was it would affect the micro flipping. Like, you know, or, or micro flipping or post passing was very difficult if I increased it too much. If I increased it a lot, though, it, it, it wasn't too bad. But again, that's down to personal preferences but then it makes the table play very differently as, as well like it may make it play too fast or certain shots will be affected right so that's the stronger flippers you know not a gigantic difference now narrow flippers so that's what i was describing earlier narrow flippers are basically like normal realistic flipper angles just like uh sonic has basically the sonic pitball mania you know so as you'll see when i go to try to do the shots it's that same higher angle that I had before. So it makes it much more difficult to make those shots, but if you still want those settings, then they're there for you. So that's what the profiles all do for the main settings that you'll visually see during gameplay. And that's about it, guys. And then if you wanna you hit F again and it makes the tool go away, and there's a good reason why we added that. And I'll, oh, and, and I'll point out, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it or not. Uh, the physics, uh, this physics, uh, physics tweaker tool, uh, the idea was uh, from Gimli. Uh, Gimli, first name Bob, you know, he's kind of like an unsung, one of, one of the many unsung future pinball heroes over the years that, you know, I've, I've worked with and, you know, been benefited greatly from their knowledge. You know, Gimli... Years ago, when I first started getting into using BAM features, 
he had a bunch of mini tutorials for each feature posted at Go Pinball, and that was my Bible. Without those features, man, I wouldn't have not gotten into, you know, using BAM advanced features at all without that. So, you know, and he's done that for lots of things over the years, and he's also created a couple of his own tables, like Rat, uh, is it Rat Race, I think? Yeah, Rat Race uh, and uh, a pool table. Neither one of them, which are pinball games in the future pinball. They're, um, you really should check them out at Pinball Nirvana. They're really cool. So, anyways, <laughs> the PhysX tool was his idea, you know? So he gave us the first implementation of it, you know? Uh, his original idea was to have the settings automatically save every time you change anything. I personally don't like that. I like the idea of having the choice to save them uh, myself manually and then have them as a reference when I make more changes. Uh, and he also had it so that they were applied when the table started up if you had the tool enabled, you know, and I personally don't like that either. I want to use the table script at startup. So that way, you know, I can have three references, separate references to use, and I can see the difference while playing. And I will remember what I saved to the table file the last time I saved it, you know, and that's just how I personally want it. Uh, so Gimli came up with the idea. Uh, then I came in and uh, overhauled it to the way I like, and uh, you know, and all these newer, save options and all that other stuff is stuff I added. Then Anante had the, the idea of uh, being able to toggle it on and off on the fly and then make sure certain settings are there. And the reason why is, when if you want to use the BAM menu, right? Well, it uses up, down, left, right. So if you want to do anything in the BAM menu, you're going to be changing both things at the same time. So you don't want that. So hit F to turn off the, the tweaker. Now you can go back and mess with BAM options. So. As an example, I'll go into physics tweaks. Now, the table slope, I'll point out again, that has to be done in the table editor. The ch making that change in the green XML code where the FPS is changed, it has no effect. Don't ask me why. It's one of the few things that doesn't do anything in that code, but yeah, the, the table slope won't do anything. So if you guys want to have a table that plays faster or slower, then you can try different table slope settings. So for example, uh, you can see, you know, how the ball's falling right now, right? Like, uh, overall, how fast it was. If I change this to 5.5, then the table is going to play faster. The ball's going to drop a lot quicker. Uh, your power ch settings on the flippers, the omegas, and everything else is going to be affected differently. Uh, you may or may not be able to make the same shots. So that's at 5.5. If you go to 5.6... Then you're gonna see it's it feels much heavier, which or not 5.6, sorry, six. <laughs> you're gonna see that it's much heavier feeling. Some people may prefer that, but then you're gonna to have to possibly adjust other settings to allow the table to completely work correctly. Things like uh, wire ramps, you know, like when the ball like pops out of the 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 buck, it may or may not quite reach it well enough. You know, like everything's kind of tuned to work correctly, so. If you change the table slope, it may have an effect on certain aspects of the table that don't allow them to work correctly. So keep that in mind if you change that in the editor. And if I put this down to five, well, then you're going to see, like, you know, the ball's uh, going to go much slower, and then your flipper power is going to make it fly further, and it's going to have an effect on every shot. But you may like that more, you know, because uh, it's, it's easier to control. It's not, you know, dropping as quick, right? So just things to keep in mind, guys. Okay. And that's and that I mean that's basically it, man. So so yeah. And again, this table here, I'm gonna tilt out. So basically, if you tilt on time attack, it instantly is a game over, and that's basically how I got uh, the workaround to the crash. If you fail time time attack, I just have it tilt, and then it automatically makes it game over and that avoids the crash problem, you know, and, and I made that an option. If you want the old sequence back, you can. I made it, you can change that in the table script, but you're taking a chance at a possible table crash. So my recommendation is leave it be and, uh, you know, avoid the crash altogether. Uh, but yeah, man, like, I mean, I love this, how this table turned out. Like, you know, this is just, I know I ranted on this early, but you know, it's just, it's so fun, man. It's, it's such a, such a great table. And it, with these new physics, I think you guys are going to love it with these new options. I think you guys are going to really love having that because then you can change it up to what you like and your play style 
And even if you don't like any of the profiles, you can, you can make your changes as you want while playing and then just come back to the profile and the table script and update your settings here. You know, and, and, and in this case, I'm, I was using a profile two with 596. So any changes I made, if I want them to, you know, be permanent for the table, then I change these settings here and then save the table and you're good to go, man. And yeah, so, I mean, that's really about it. Like that's, you know, I just wanted to kind of go through a basic, you know, similar to the last video, but not a comparison video like I did before, because, you know, I think people know the differences well enough at this point. Uh, but just uh, keep in mind, guys, that uh, not everyone's going to have these kind of options on their table. Uh, this is how I'm personally doing it. Uh, maybe others will adopt this into theirs. I, you know, I, I don't know. So not every physics table is going to be exactly the same. Not all of them are going to have options like this. And not all of them are going to play the same. It's going to come down to whoever added the options and, uh, you know, how they adjusted the physics for their own personal tastes, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, always, 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 guys read the install instructions for every table because one table may have different options compared to the others right so yeah uh, that's about all i gotta say man i know it's a long long video and it's a lot of explain explaining things and all that you know but i think when people you know go through this themselves and try this tool out on star wars sonic doesn't have it i don't know if i'm gonna add it after the fact you know because it's already been updated but you know other tables coming out will probably have something similar it may be updated to something newer with more features j lu when he comes back from vacation he's going to probably be adding even more to phys x so this is not a set in stone thing guys phys x is not you know just a one a one-time thing and that's it it can be custom tailored to how you like it and i love it you know all my releases are going to start playing better a lot of other future pinball tables that everyone loves but hated the physics now can all be made to play better so much better not to the you know highest class of visual pinball we're not up there yet you know the future pinball the ball could still do a, an odd thing here and there it's not perfect but we're damn close we're getting up there you know like uh, the options are there to make every table play better and i, I love it man like you know you know if, if you're if you're someone who you know only likes visual pinball then none of this applies to you so you won't care so uh, you know it, it is what it is but if you're someone who has an open mind and wants to try new tables i've had lots of guys who have never tried future pinball install it now because of this and they tried the sonic table and they love it they're like this plays great you know i made a couple small adjustments for my own personal preferences but overall they thought it played fantastic and they liked cosmic princess they like how that played and there's gonna be other tables coming out star wars is coming out very soon you know so keep an eye out guys and i just really hope you embrace this change in future pinball physics uh i'm i'm happy so i hope i'm happy and i hope you'll be happy for it too so enjoy it all you crabby ass jerks out there who just want to spam topics with your negativity yeah go away you know no one wants to see that no one wants to hear from you the rest of us want to have fun and that's what we're going to do so go out there guys download these awesome physics tables and have some freaking fun that's the end of this video see ya